This video is sponsored by Tech Wars Global Conflict. What's up, Lore Masters? In the last few episodes of this series, we broke down the lore of the Romulans in the original series and the next generation. Moving into Deep Space Nine, it's going to be somewhat tricky. For veterans of the channel, you're aware that I'm most known for my breakdown of Deep Space Nine and specifically the Dominion War. Looking at the Dominion War's playlist, both defunct and revamped, I have a combined runtime of over 12 hours of content. What the hell am I doing with my life? It's inevitable that there will be some retreading of old ground at this point from what I've done in the Dominion War series and this one. Though, as this breakdown is hyper-focused on the Romulans and the Dominion War episodes aren't, I think I'll be able to add additional insights that are pertinent to the Romulans specifically, but weren't to the Dominion War. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. The first episodes we see in this era with the Romulans is in DS9's The Search Part 1 and Part 2. Unfortunately, the Romulans are little more than a deuce ex machina that, when their technology fails, turns into a plot point as the midpoint plot twist. In the arc between the two episodes, though, we do see the introduction of the Defiant-class starship, Starfleet's 27th ship of war that will be claimed to be the very first ship of war. This is either to show Sisko is willing to lie to his crew, or is used for dramatic effect and just inaccurate. Pick your poison. The ship is equipped with a cloaking device, but not the Starfleet prototype we see in TNG, cause screw you tie-ins. This is a Romulan cloaking device. Let's address this point for a moment. I've discussed it in the Dominion War series, but some interesting conversations sprouted up around that plot point. The use of the Romulan cloaking device can be perplexing when you first take a look at it. As I stated, the Federation clearly has the ability to create the technology, and they can even make it better than what the Romulans can do. Not only that, but we also know that the alliance between the Klingons and Starfleet is so strong that it would mean that the Klingon Defense Force would likely be very open to sharing the technology. However, there are a couple of arguments for why the Federation approached the Romulans originally. First, this is still a pre-Dominion War era Starfleet. Federation officials buying knee pads as to not scuff their knees when it comes to working with other governments is par for the course. So making a deal with the Romulans to appease the treaty that they had would make a lot of sense, at least for Starfleet. While technically a Klingon cloaking device doesn't break the treaty, Starfleet may not have been wanting to antagonize the Romulans. Also, this is a good opportunity to bridge the divide and possibly improve relations. Secondly, while this is never stated in dialogue or is outright shown, what we see in the original series, TNG, DS9, and Voyager leads me to believe that the cloaking systems of the Klingons was considered a bit inferior to that of the Romulans. This isn't definitive, of course, but it would make sense if Romulan cloaking technology was more advanced than Klingon counterparts. So it's likely that it just made sense to come to an agreement with the Star Empire. Not that Starfleet would ultimately keep their word anyway. It could also just be that Sisko walked up to the Romulan diplomat and beat the living hell out of him until he agreed. As for why the Romulans would agree to it, it seems very in character in my opinion. They knew that Starfleet wanted a cloaking device and could either make their own or get it from the Klingons, so why not agree here where you can keep them on a short leash? Ultimately, the two episodes have very little information about the Romulans beyond the introduction of a new character that we'll never see again, and the knowledge that when Starfleet officers are put into a simulation, they think that the Romulans will be removed from negotiations with the other powers and war would be imminent. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Tech Wars Global Conflict, a game with giant humanoid robots, isometric PvP action, it's free to play, and available on the Abyss platform. Not only is this game a sponsor, but I actually really enjoy it. You should check it out by clicking the link below. All that, and it's free. Supporting my sponsors supports the channel. Now let's get back into it. When looking at DS9's The Visionary, it gets a bit more complicated and irking. In the episode, the crew of DS9 is visited by a Romulan delegation that is there to discuss all of the findings of the Defiant while it was in the Gamma Quadrant. During the debriefing with Sisko, they find out that not much has been learned or ascertained about the Dominion. Additionally, Sisko does not want to give classified information garnered about the Dominion during that trip. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I doubt the Romulans agreed in the new treaty that Starfleet could utilize the cloaking device and would have to give all information 
except for that which is classified and considered to be the most important and vital information to Starfleet Command. I mean, seriously, are you kidding me? I get classified information that may not be pertinent to the Dominion, but if it involves the cloaking device, Gamma Quadrant, and or Dominion, then you are required to talk about it. And then, after this, we see that the Klingons, you know, the closest allies of Starfleet, walk into Quark's bar and start a fight with the Romulans. And at least one Starfleet person, who is possibly security, gets into the fray and assists the Klingons. Because that's a really good look. A yellow-shirted Starfleet officer getting into a fight that the Klingons started. It is just a huge wonder to me why the Romulans would not side with Starfleet when the war starts. I mean, Starfleet is such a good ally. If you've been a fan of the channel for a long time, you know that I love bashing Starfleet. I mean, honestly, if I had to stop bashing Starfleet, I don't know that I could exist in this world anymore. I would probably become suicidal. But as much as I want to attack the Federation here, some of what the Romulans do just isn't reasonable. Taking a look at it, the Romulans walk into DS9 like they own the place. They make unreasonable demands of the crew of the Defiant, wanting to know things that aren't necessarily pertinent to the Dominion. This would include wanting to know personal relationships that have barely any connection and even questioning Quark. I'm sorry, Quark isn't Starfleet, nor is he Bajoran military. Cura is understandable to a degree, but it is pushing it. If you want Quark's testimony, you can buy it. The Romulans have an agreement with Starfleet, no one else. So it's not to say that the Romulans are perfect in this episode. They definitively are not from this aspect. And for those who have seen the episode, they know how it ends. Before I break that down, I honestly am conflicted when it comes to how they decided to go with the episode. I do love the story arc, what happens with Miles, though it continues the trope that Miles must suffer, and I do enjoy how it's put together. It's an interesting story from start to finish. However, I also like what they did with the tensions between the Romulan Star Empire and the crew of Deep Space Nine. Unfortunately, that didn't happen as it would be discovered that the Romulans were preparing to destroy the station and close the wormhole. We know for a fact this was the Romulan plan, but since there's really no evidence beyond a time-hopping O'Brien, they aren't able to do much except tell the head of the Romulan delegation that they were aware of the Warbird and were going to blow it to hell if it tried anything. When we look at the Romulans and what they wanted to do, it is stereotypically mustache twirling. Though consistent for the Romulan Star Empire. If the Dominion was a large threat, then closing the wormhole is the best idea, and if you had to kill people to do it and make it look like an accident to save the Alpha Quadrant, well, that's not a bad trade-off. This is from their perspective, of course, but it's something that would seem logical to Romulans. The delegation would be foiled, and probably for good reason. Killing innocent people probably isn't the best idea. Stay tuned as we deep dive further into Romulan lore. And on a side note, for those who actually stayed to listen to the entire episode, I'm actually sponsoring a Romulan War fanfiction movie that's coming out soon. Guys, this thing is awesome. You're going to want to see it. So I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.